the truth is, man, you're always missing good trades. Like I'm missing a trade right now talking to you on futures or commodities or crypto or something. Something's moving somewhere. There's always good trades. There's always bad trades. You're going to miss them. But the key is experiences. Like you're making money in trading to do something. What is it that you're trying to do? Welcome back everyone to the Epson Young with Jeremy Newsom. Jeremy is someone that I really, really respect for his uh, focus on money mindset. He talks about how to really develop a good mindset with money, how to make more money, and also, also how to trade like a pro. So how's it going, Jeremy? What's up? What is up, my man? It's been so long, dude. I'm amped about this. It's been a while. So it's been, I don't know how many years, or maybe three years since we last spoke and we last did an interview. Uh, by the way, you feel we didn't pass perform really well. So looking forward to see how we can add more value to do it to people and kind of share some more lessons people can use and, and benefit from. So tell me a bit about what's been going on since we last spoke, like three years or so ago. Dude, all kinds of crazy things. Uh, the most important, I have a son now. He is four months old. His name is Jason Michael Newsom. I got married. Uh, her name is Svetlana Newsom. And uh, we moved to a new place. So I live in a different place. I'm still in Nashville, Tennessee, but uh, we have a new house here. And trading has been great, man. The last few months have been really good for me, I feel like. I love the volatility. I like day trading, as you know. And I do swing trading still. I do all kinds of time frames. It's been really fruitful and I've enjoyed the volatility and I've been, uh, been crushing it, man. I feel really good about life and I'm really excited to pour into your listeners. That's very cool. So very good update. I know you're doing a lot of stuff into cryptos now more than before for sure. So how did that come to be and how did that kind of happen? So the crypto thing, man, I mean, truly was kind of an accident because I live by a very strategic formula as it relates to money and income. And I'll kind of share that with your listeners right now. So imagine 100% of your income, whatever that is on a weekly basis, $100, $1,000, $10,000, doesn't matter. Let's just use $1,000 to keep numbers simple. The very, very first 10 to 20% of whatever income you make from anything, work, trading, job, rentals, whatever, YouTube, is you take 10 to 20% and you pay yourself first. So that money goes to you, my friend, right? So if you want to get like a massage, you want to buy new shoes, if you want to go out to a nice dinner, you do something for yourself first. Number two is you create a giving amount. So 10 to 20% of whatever you make goes to a charity, an organization, a gift. And then 20 to 30% goes to assets. And that asset can be cryptos, stocks, books, businesses, coaching, experiences, whatever, right? Real estate. That is what I did with cryptocurrencies and truly in a way, man, accidental is I've been following that exact same model since 2015. And I've been putting most of that money into, as an asset, cryptocurrencies, specifically Bitcoin and Ethereum. Those are the two that I really, really focus a lot of the assets on. So I started running out of ways to pay myself. So instead of doing the top 10%, I made giving my top percent. So the very, very first thing I do with money is I give 10 to 20% away. Then about 40 to 50% of my income goes right to assets. Then everything after that goes into whatever bills are left over. And once all the bills are covered, hopefully by either your assets or your other streams of income, you buy more assets with it. And that slowly bubbles and ripples into this crazy, crazy effect. And that's kind of what happened on, on Ethereum is I was able to take in 2017, you know, tens of thousands of dollars and turn it into hundreds of thousands with the run-up that happened in 2017. I sold high. I started getting back in in 2019, 2020, and then 2021. And so those hundreds of thousands became millions. That's pretty cool. By the way, that, that framework is also huge. Something I also do myself is I save a big part of my income for and then investing after in assets or different things and making sure that I have like some parts for trading, some parts for more stable things and, and also giving money. Now, tell me why giving money because that's something a lot of people like, it's a reflex. You think, well, I just make like 30K a year. Why would I give like 5K or something to someone? Why does that matter? So my answer to that is the reason to live is to give. It feels good, man. It's one of the absolute best feelings that we can create that giving from an open and generous heart, that approach where I don't want anything back in return. I just want to give this to you 
to help you, to fulfill you, to excite you. And it's so fulfilling. I, I've yet to find something that can change your body chemistry and your, psycholo- your psychology and your physiology faster than giving, especially an amount that you might be uncomfortable with. So let's say you normally give, like you mentioned, you make $30,000 a year and you give $5,000 away. What if you put your mind to giving $20,000 away in 2022 or 2023 or the next year? You go, well, that's insane, bro. I only make 30,000. Like I can't give 20,000 away. What will happen though is your brain will start to create questions and beliefs and thoughts on how can I, rather than I can't, how can I do it? Because again, when we're giving, it feels good. It's amazing to the world. And there's one very important principle that I think a lot of people would agree with. The more you give, the more you receive. And if you want to test that universal law, give some money away a little bit more than you're used to, get scared, get uncomfortable, and watch you get more money. It's amazing. It's incredible the way it works. Pretty cool to hear. Now, how does that money mindset appears in trading? Is, is this like the same principle apply or is it a different thing? Or because you have some losses, of course, you kind of uh, might be stressed by it, but how can you apply this money mindset to trading? So that's a great question, my brother. The way it relates to trading, and again, this is all my opinion, right? But when you change your perspective to I'm losing money and all the negative connotation that goes in your brain when that happens, I'm stupid, I'm dumb, I'm not good enough, I'm not rich enough, I'm an idiot, I'm bad at this, I suck at this. Instead of going down the negative Nancy train, we're able to change that perspective, change that internal challenge of I'm not good enough to wait a minute. Someone is better than I am. You're respecting their craft. You're respecting their skill set, And now you are giving them much needed money. Maybe that person needed the money much more than you that day. You had tons. So you're helping pay for their meals that week or their rent or their mortgage. They beat you fair and square. It helps damper the sting of a loss. Wow. So instead of losing money, getting into it to another trader, that, that's insane. And yeah. I've never seen anyone do that. So, or think that way. So that's huge. Yeah, man. I hope it helps uh, all of your listeners. I know you have a tons of them, man. And also congratulations on your success, bro. I know you've been grinding and I'm so proud of you, dude. It's amazing to see your friends uh, do well in business and in their careers. Awesome. What we, we covered this before many times, but what we just someone who struggles with money and then get, gets into trading to make more money. So they want to be able to get rich from, trading or, or maybe not rich, but be able to have more freedom, quit their job with trading, but they struggle with money already in their, their life before trading. What would you tell them to kind of focus on to get out of that mindset? They don't have a trading problem. They have an income problem. And that's my answer. Generally, if you want to make money trading, but you already struggle with money, so you don't have enough money to pay the bills, you live paycheck to paycheck, you don't feel an abundance with money, you think small, you play small, and you're afraid of risks. If you're listening to this, you'll know if you fit in one of those categories. Essentially, if you feel like you are not at a really, really sound financial level, I do not think, in my opinion, you should try to trade for a living. I think you should practice. I think you should chip away at it. I think it should be a side hustle. Right. I think you should invest. You should put money into stocks that you have a very strong certainty that they're going to go higher over the next three to five months. And you should work on your income, your expenses, your budgeting, and your spending. Because that's a cornerstone of any good business, man. Because trading is a business. So if your foundation sucks, the trading thing's not going to help. Right. You're just going to slowly bleed money and you're going to just slowly give it away. So we have to work on your income because what I've noticed, my brother, is when more individuals have a little bit of a larger income or a little bit of a bigger base to start with or more cushion or less debt, then it's easier. Now, if you are a single individual, no kids, no one to really care for, it's just you and your house, you can live off of $1,000 a month, right? You can live that lifestyle where you grind it out and you eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and you trade and practice and practice and practice and practice. Like you can do that. I've done it 
Everyone can do it. It's okay. But it's a lot harder when you have a family and responsibility. So it does depend on where you are. And it does depend on how old you are. I have a gentleman that I know. His name is Hunter. He, I met him the very first time at a tr trading conference in North Carolina. And at the time, uh, Etienne, he was working at uh, either UPS or FedEx. I forget which one. I think it was UPS. And he was doing like the, the box delivery thing, right? But he was working there getting paid, what, $17 an hour. And, you know, he was doing okay, but he was single, living on his own. He's probably 23 years old and just stacking paper. But he hated it. He didn't like it. It was soul crushing. It wasn't good work. He didn't feel fulfilled by it. It was annoying. It was boring. It, it sucked. The people he was with weren't awesome. So he st was eventually able to save up about $20,000, quit UPS, drove Uber full-time, figured out how Uber works, studied Uber, went to YouTube and, and typed in how to become the best Uber driver possible, took all those tips, tricks, invested into himself, and made enough money driving Uber on the weekends almost the same that he was making UPS and still was able to trade. Now, if you have that lifestyle, you can do a lot with a little, right? You can have $20,000 and pop around to England, Spain, different parts of Europe, Argentina, Chile. I mean, you're in Thailand or Indonesia, right? You can bounce around with three or $4,000 a month easily, easily. And then you can make that with $20,000 trading. And that's, if that's all your income, right, is off of trading, you can do pretty well if you are, on a really tight budget at a young age. Yeah, good point. Good point. Tell me about the hard work or like the, the grinding aspect of you being able to become a good trader. What did that look like? And what made you kind of get out of it? What were your, your breakthroughs or your big, big jumps? Dog, I love the grind. And you've interviewed so many good traders on your podcast. And I've listened to most of them. I think most of them would say the exact same thing. One of two things happens. You either spend enough time or you lose all of your money you're at absolute rock bottom. The, the world is on your shoulders and you either get up, give up or get up, up, right? You're either going through it or you're growing through it. One of those two things occur. So to answer your question, what the grind looks like is practice makes permanent, not perfect, but permanent. If you want to trade for a living, you should put in a ridiculous amount of time practicing. When the markets close, not when the markets open, practicing at least three hours a day, minimum. I put in seven hours a day, every single day for seven months, Monday through Monday, no question. And that was a practice session. When the market was closed at night, I was going back through and I was looking at the patterns. I was looking at moving averages. I would back test relative strength index, Bollinger Bands, adaptive moving averages, um, whole moving averages, other dips, uh, like exponential moving averages, simple moving averages, weekly charts, daily charts, hourly charts, 30 minute charts, five minute charts. I started going through all types of indicators, right? MACDs, stochastics, um, Docinian channels, like everything, man. I'll read books. So in that seven hours at night, I would sit down and read books. I would study and I would put in the time we discussed this before, the practice aspect of going back to the charts and being able to learn from things. Now, people could get discouraged really fast in terms of like they test something out like a bonjour banner or whichever, and it doesn't work. What made you want to go back and, and test more things and try again more in, in the future? So some people are discouraged really fast with back testing, with like trying new things or this strategy doesn't work, this one doesn't work, and then they give up. Yeah, man, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. Dude, honestly, brother, that's called life. You know, I mean, people are going to give up at some point. So it doesn't matter if it's, if you're trying to play soccer, if you're trying to be a chef, if you're going to open up a restaurant, if you want to be an ultra marathon runner, you're going to hit a wall and a point in that career where you will quit. And it doesn't matter what the career is. What matters is how bad do you want it? And most individuals will say, oh, I, I want it really bad. Prove it, dog. Put in the time. Try, practice, figure out what you're doing wrong. Do whatever you can. Dude, I did and still do everything. Everything, man. Hypnosis, meditation, ice baths, healing. 
I do literally anything I can to either get an edge, to make myself calmer, to make myself happier, to make myself more content. I'll read whatever book. I'll do whatever yoga pose. I do the most ridiculous, insane physical feats to keep myself grounded and remind myself that I'm still a savage. And I'm still disciplined because that is a requirement in my life and in my version of the world to be really successful at anything. So essentially, brother, to really, really answer your question is that constant and never ending improvement that I just seek naturally. You have to do that to be good at anything. Tennis, backgammon, or checkers. You're going to have to put in the time. You're going to have to study. You're going to have to lose. And on the other side of all of that is a small win. And when you get the small win, if you're not hooked after that small win, this isn't for you. Right. My very first trade was a small win on silver. Um, and that three thousand dollars changed my life forever. That small win hooked me, and this is all I wanted to do ever since. And I've been slowly doing it ever since since then. I love it. This is this is amazing advice for sure. Now, what are some of these these habits, these things you do that you feel help you to become a better trader? Maybe meditation, maybe something else. Are there some things that people don't talk about necessarily that much that help you to become a better trader? It's a great question, man. You know, I think the absolute thing that will make someone a better trader is an understanding of time management and understanding how to best, how, how an individual should best use their time. Let me give you an example. I had a gentleman who was a real estate agent and he hated real estate. He's like, dude, I don't like doing with customers. I don't like doing phone calls. I don't like doing all the paperwork. He had done it for like 10 years. He's like, man, this sucks. I want to, I want to trade full time, dude. And I go, all right, man. Well, that's fantastic. How much experience do you have? How much money do you have saved up? All those fun things. Well, he was in his late thirties and he had $40,000 saved up. That was it. He's like, well, you can, he was single didn't have a family, didn't have kids, didn't have that thing. But I was like, you can do it with $40,000, but it's going to be a tough grind, right? You're going to make maybe two to $3,000 a month if you're really good and that's going to be it. Or you can understand your value. And I gave him an example of a video game character. Like, let's say you're building a video game character and you can design an attribute. His attribute for real estate sales was a huge green bar. And your attribute for stock trading is a tiny little minuscule green bar because you've only been doing it for a year. You've been selling real estate for 10 years and you've been trading for a year and you want to trade full time. Even though you dislike it, use your real estate skills and make some serious money doing that. I then asked him, have you ever sold a million dollar home? And his answer was no. And I said, why? He's like, dude, I'm not good enough. Like brother, it's the same. It's the same process, right? If you sell a three hundred thousand dollar home or a million dollar home, it's the same process, same paperwork. You get paid more on the million dollar home. Focus on seven figure homes or more. Become good enough mentally, physically, emotionally, technically, all the things that you need to really feel like you are good enough. Sell a few million dollar houses. Fund your account and understand that you can use your real estate skills to funnel money into your trading account to give you a best edge. The reason I'm bringing up the story, what will absolutely help most traders to be extremely successful is other streams of income and knowing what your time is worth. Because if you make $100,000 a year being an engineer and you make $20,000 a year trading and you spend 80 hours a week trading and 40 hours a week being an engineer, stop trading altogether, save all of your time, make more money as an engineer, become the best engineer you possibly can, really stack up your gains so that you can start buying assets that pay for your expenses so you can cash flow your life so you don't have any expenses at all and then build up enough reserves so you can start trading for a living and take a part-time job, slowly scale out of it, that will give you the best potential for success. And the only other option is to literally drop everything, stop being an engineer, quit altogether, throw yourself to the wolves, quit, and, and make trading work. 
Because, brother, you got to go all in on one thing and get really good at one thing. Concentrate to get rich. Diversify to stay wealthy. I think you got to, for a lot of people, you got to decide what you want to focus on. Like, is it really the trading aspect or the aspect of making money, having freedom? Because people might kind of think that all trading is the thing they want to do, but then it kind of makes a big detour where it could have been getting faster to their goal of freedom and financial, like more money and getting rich without trading first, but getting there, like bringing trading later in the process. And that's a Bro, big aspect. hundred percent. My man, that's gold. What you just spit was gold. Because you got to figure out, do you want to trade because you love trading? Bro, I dream about stocks weekly. I love stocks. I love candles. I love chart patterns. I love breakouts. I love pennants, flags, compressions, Elliott waves, dog. I could, I could pay. I could never make a dime ever again from trading. I would trade every day. I love it so much. But if you love money more than trading, Find uh, there's easier ways. <laughs> there's a lot easier ways to make money, like sales. Just go, just go do sales. Go sell something. That's easier than trading, right? A lot easier. Just go get really, really good at selling something, and you can make tons of money that way. But if you love trading because it's just amazing, and you love the grind and the opportunity and the skill set that's required and the internal discipline and the and the movements of the charts and like the heartbeat of the market. And the fact that every time a candle is printed, it's on your screen and it's there in the market forever for the rest of eternity. You're watching history be made in front of your eyes every single second, every single day. If that intrigues you then trade and just like any other profession, like if you're trying to play tennis professionally, it's going to take you time, but in five to 10 years, you will be at a spot where no one else that you know is at. You will be free. You will have time freedom. You will have money freedom. And more importantly, you'll have a skill set that you can use for the rest of your life to make money. Yeah. And it's all about seeing the big picture, like the long-term view of things where training could come part of it, but it could be like in a year or two before you do something else, like after you've done something else. So it could be something that happens in the process, but not right now. 100% man. Absolutely. Like it could be something you do right later down the road. Just know that it can be a part or a portion of how you make money. It just depends on what you really like, but give yourself the experience and the ability to really feel and find out what you like doing. Play with some stuff, right? Make a little bit of a mistake. Try some things out. See what you like because you're right, man. Like it might not be trading. It might just be money. Awesome. I know people will ask about what you trade, what you like to focus on. So you want to kind of give us a quick brief overview of, what you're looking at, what you trade, and what you like to focus on. Uh, I love day trading. I think it's amazing. This is my watch list. Uh, this is a crypto chart. Uh, I'll pull up my day trading watch list right here. So this is my day trading watch list. And I will walk you through my day trading plan. I'll even show it uh, for everyone who is watching. Um, let me pull this up. Where is right here. So here's my strategy. So this is my day trading strategy, right? Roblox, Apple, AMD, Tesla, Delta Airlines, and NVIDIA. I'll zoom in. Stock needs to gap above the prior higher day or low of the day to take it on the first 20 minutes to trade it in the first 20 minutes. So rule number one needs to gap above the higher day or low of the day. So this is my strategy. I have it up all the time. I'm using a three minute chart for entries, right? Bull strategy, bear candle closing above the TNEMA on both extended and non-extended hours. Long above that candle, stop below its low and below the moving average. Okay. So now let's go into AMD and just break this down. So it has to open above the high of the day for me to get in the first 20 minutes. So high of day on AMD yesterday was 132.42. We opened at 133.45, a dollar above the high of the day. So that means I can trade it in the first 20 minutes. Now I'm waiting for a three minute bear candle to close above the 10 EMA on both the extended and non extended time frames. So here's what that's going to look like. Here's your three minute chart. I have two charts back to back. Okay. AMD, AMD. So this one on the, on the left is going to be the extended time frame. The one on the right is the non extended time frame. So if you're watching this, um, I'll kind of show you exactly how the trade unfolded. But here is the 
very first bear candle that closed above the 10 EMA on both the extended, which is the left chart, and the non-extended, which is the right-hand side of the chart. This is the first bear candle that closed above the 10 EMA on both time frames. Boom, boom. Then you got another one. So this second one is compression. Indecision, compression, who's going to win? No idea. Bulls or bears? Couldn't tell you. But both candles closed above the 10 EMA, bear candle, opened above the prior high of the yesterday's high. I can trade this one in the first 20 minutes. Entry at 133.75, stop at 132.50. That's a dollar and a half of risk. Exit at 136, beautiful 1.2 Rs. For me, that was a little north of $5,000. In essentially 12 minutes on a plan that I show everyone right here, you can copy this. It works really well. I use it all the time. It's really, really simple. It works just on every day right? But it works extremely well. And it gives you a strategy and a system to follow, a guidance to follow. And I'm going to be doing that exact day trading strategy for the next year, for all of 2022. And it's going to be on this list right here. And uh, yeah, man. So that's, that's what I do is my goal is in trading brother is I, I try to create a system. It doesn't matter if it's a swing trading, day trading. I try to create really strict rules and I go, this is what I'm going to do. Like on crypto, I take whatever cash flow I make from other parts of my life. It could be book sales. It could be YouTube ad revenue, which hundreds of dollars a month. It could be uh, a sales check that I got. It could be income from a rental property that I have. It could be from Udemy course sales. It could be from whatever, coaching, anything. If I make some income, I will take 30% of that and put it into Ethereum, Right. I will take the other amount. I'll pay off all my bills for that month. And then whatever's left over, I'll buy some stocks. I'll put it into my IRAs. I'll put it into some of my, my day trading account. My day trading account, if I make some money, which I did today, I'm, I can take some of that money out of my day trading account, right? If I make $5,000, wow, amazing. That's almost all my monthly bills paid off in one trade. I can take out all that money, pay myself, buy some assets, give most of it away, and then chip away at whatever my expenses are. You do that three or four or five times in a month, you're good to go. So essentially you're looking for a gap in the beginning, then a small sort of weak pullback to get in the, tr the trade, then go with the direction of the gap. That's it, man. Um, but uh, you don't have to. I could go against the gap. It definitely works. I'm just looking for, like you said, some type of uh, formation where it's really, really strict. If it doesn't gap at all, then I have to wait an hour, right? If it takes out the high of the day or the low of the day, my takeout, I mean, just wick above, wick below, doesn't matter. If it moves past the low of the day or the high of the day, I can trade it, but I have to wait 20 minutes. The only time I can take a trade in the first 20 minutes is it does, yes, have to open above the prior high or below the prior low of the day. How did you come up with that system? Did you create it yourself or something you find out from a mentor or coach or how did that come to be? Um, that's a good question, man. Yeah, that, that was... I, I just built it. Uh, I do have mentors. I do have coaches, but generally um, most of my mentors and coaches are, they're, they're, in, they're in trading. Dennis Dick is one of my mentors and coaches um, in trading. He's I think one of the best day traders in the world and he's, he's incredible. Um, but he does, he's half robot, half human. So, you, you know, like you can, you can work with some individuals, but essentially that particular strategy that's mine, um, but that's, dude, anyone can come up with that. That's easy. It's just a lot of practice, a knowing when to day trade. And in my experience, the best day trades are when the stock has broken above the high a day or low of day or opened above the high a day or lower day, just from a lot of experience, man. Yeah, so find, finding that momentum, finding something that can, that's going to move and why it's going to move is, is key. What about swing trading? You have a different perspective on how to swing trade. Is it like the same principle or is it a different thing completely? Yeah. Awesome question, man. Same, same principle. So I'm still looking for that indecision move. I'm still using a little bit of a smaller term moving average and I'm absolutely still waiting for uh, a candle to close above or close below and really allow myself to get into that trade. So if I can, I'll do an example on Tesla. Uh, let me share my screen again. So Tesla, one of my favorite stocks to trade, 
And what I'm going to do is just kind of go back in time to one of my more profitable trades in 2020, uh, 2021. And so again, what I'm looking for is same concept. It's in as I'm looking for a bear candle to close above the 10 EMA. Uh, and then once the candle closes above the 10, I'm looking to get in bullish above that bear candle. It doesn't always work, obviously, right? Right over here, that was a loss back in July. And then you wouldn't have gotten another trigger until over here. And that was also a loss in August. So you'd have had two losses back to back. Very, very normal for most people to go, oh, well, I've had two losses in a row. This system sucks. I hate it. Well, two weeks later, it would have worked really nicely right there. Would have worked really nicely right there. This was a non-trigger on this day. So, cause it didn't go above the high. You can kind of see that. So then we got back below the moving average. So once you get back below the moving average, it kind of clears everything, kind of resets it. Well, the very next day, here is your bear candle closing above the 10. Very similar principle. This could be a five minute chart. It could be a three minute chart. Doesn't matter. The principle is the exact same. You got the movement. You went below the moving average. We got back above the moving average. You have a bear candle closing. I'm going to follow this system and the strategy if I see it. Entry is right above there. Stop is below the stop and below the moving average. So this is what I'm going to get in bullish. And it triggered. And that's a, I mean, that's a phenomenal move, right? Phenomenal move. Just in those two days. And it, it did end up going higher. And I was in for a vast majority of that move. But even just these two days, man, I mean, let's say you bought 100 shares, right? You spent 75 grand. Entry there, stop there, move was there. On 100 shares, on Tesla, that's 60, 30, 30 points, that's $3,000. So in two days, you make $3,000 risking $2,000. You risk two to make three. $3,000 is solid, right? That's a mortgage for, I don't know, I would argue the vast majority of the US, right? Uh, if you were in Indonesia or Bali or the Philippines, like that's an Airbnb and food and drinks and everything for like three or four months. Uh, that's a solid, solid income at that point. And that's one trade. You could find one trade like that, take that one trade, make your money, and then go live your life. You don't have to make money every day to make money every month. So let that sink in. Like you don't have to trade every day to be a day trader. You can say, see a trade set up, play it, and then move on. Go about your life. Go do something else with your life for a week, for a month, for two, three weeks, and then come back to the markets and play when you feel like it. That's a good advice. However, I feel like people could think about the fact that, well, if they're not there to see all the trades, they might miss some good trades and then maybe take only losses later when they show up at the charts. Maybe. Um, the truth is, man, you're always missing good trades. Like I'm missing a trade right now talking to you on futures or commodities or crypto or something. Something's moving somewhere. There's always good trades. There's always bad trades. You're going to miss them right? But the key is experiences. Like you're making money in trading to do something. What is it that you're trying to do? And if you're trying to, let's say you want to make a million dollars so that you can donate $800,000 to a Operation Underground Railroad to stop human sex trafficking. And if that's your goal, and if that's one of your missions, you want to donate $800,000 to an incredible and amazing organization that's going to take up some time because you're not going to just send them the money. I'm sure you're going to contact them and watch videos and be a part of these mission trips. Like you're going to do as much as you can when you pour your time and energy into an, an experience and a movement and, and, and an organization that's, that's better than you, that's bigger than you, that's more important than you. You're going to be spending time away from the charts, right? When you're with your family, when you're with your kids, right? When you're with your best friends, you want to be there rather than be thinking about the charts. So it's a mental exercise of that abundance. I'm not missing out. Everything is there. Everything will be there when I get back. This is like the ocean. No one's ever gone into the ocean, my friend, and gone, oh my gosh, I'm going to surf every single hour, every single day for the next 17 weeks. Because if I don't, I'm going to come back and there's going to be no waves, there's going to be no ocean, it's going to be gone. You surf too long in the water and you never get back on the land, you'll drown. So you have to take breaks. You have to take breaks. And when you take those breaks, you get rejuvenated, you get energy back, you get appreciation, you, get, you long for the ocean so you can go back. 
that's how trading is. It'll always be there. The markets will always be there. Always good trades are everywhere, all the time, every day. It's a good point of seeing it for sure. That's that's good advice. It takes the pressure off for sure, also. So it's good. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate your time. I know we talk about a lot of different topics and a lot of things. We could do this for hours, I'm sure. But I want to respect your time here. So where can people connect with you or find you after this interview? Man, the absolute best thing for individuals to do is go to my website. We actually do have a free week upcoming. So a lot of individuals love to watch me day trade and ask me questions. And um, just go to reallifetrading.com. So R-E-A-L-L-I-F-E trading.com. That's where you can find me. I have a free week. I have tons of free resources. I would love to pour into you. And uh, we also have a podcast. You know, you can you can do all kinds of stuff. We're always available on social media, but my mission personally and business-wise is to enrich lives. And I really, truly appreciate you giving me that time and ability to do that with your listeners today, man. Thank you. That's pretty cool. I know you do this only once a year, this free training week. So I hope people will benefit from it for sure. I know I helped you to uh, talk about this before in the past. So people joined it and they loved it. That's really awesome. I will just put links below for sure for that, that free week. And uh, definitely look forward to catch up with you in the future. I think, Jeremy, you're someone who really has a big mission and you really love to help people. So that's really awesome. And I'll connect with you soon.